Okay, we're going to look at the vocabulary before we read James today. Um, in chapter 14, we're going to come to a word repulsive. This is the only word we have today. Um, repulsive means disgusting. So when you hear that word today, you'll know that it means disgusting. So see if you can listen for repulsive. We are ready for chapter 14 in James and the Giant Peach. We're off, someone was shouting. We're off at last. James woke up with a jump and looked about him. The creatures were all out of their hammocks and moving excitedly around the room. Suddenly the floor gave a great heave as though an earthquake were taking place. Here we go, shouted the old green grasshopper, hopping up and down with excitement. Hold on tight happening cried James leaping out of his hammock what's going on the ladybug who was obviously a kind and gentle creature came over and stood beside him in case you don't know it she said we're about to depart forever from the top of this ghastly hill that we've been living on for so long we are about to roll away inside this great big beautiful peach to a land of 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 to a land of, of what, asked James. Never you mind, said the ladybug. But nothing could be worse than this desolate hilltop with those two repulsive ants of yours. Here, here, they all shouted, here, here. You may not have noticed it, the ladybug went on, but the whole garden, even before it reaches the steep of the hill, happens to be on a steep slope. And therefore, the only thing that's been stopping this peach from rolling away right from the beginning is the thick stem attaching it to the tree. Break the stem and off we go. Watch it, cried Miss Spider as the room gave another violent lurch. Here we go. Not quite, not quite. At this moment, continued the ladybug, our centipede, who has a pair of jaws as sharp as razors, is up there on top of the peach, nibbling away at the stem. In fact, he must be nearly clear through it, as you can tell by the way we're lurching about. Would you like me to take you under my wing so that you won't fall over when we start rolling? That is very kind of you, said James, but I think I'll be all right. Just then, when Centipede stuck his grinning face through the hole in the ceiling and shouted, I've done it, we're off. We're off, the others cried. We're off. The journey begins, shouted the centipede. And who knows where it will end, muttered the earthworm. If you have anything to do with it, it can only mean trouble. Nonsense, said the ladybug. We are now about to visit the most marvelous places and see the most wonderful things. Isn't that so, centipede? There's no knowing what we shall see, cried the centipede. We may see a creature with 49 heads who lives in the desolate snow. And whenever he catches a cold, which he dreads, he has 49 noses to blow. We may see the venomous pink spotted scrunch who can chew up a man with one bite. It likes to eat five of them roasted for lunch and 18 for supper at night. We may see a dragon and nobody knows that we won't see a unicorn there. We may see a terrible monster with toes growing out of the tufts of his hair. We may see this sweet little bitty bright hen, so playful, so kind and well-bred. And such beautiful eggs, you just boil them and then they explode and they blow off your head. The new and the noceros, surely you'll see, and that ginormous and norable gnat whose sting when it stings you goes in at the knee and comes out through the top of your hat. We may even get lost and be frozen by frost. We may die in an earthquake or tremor or nastier still. We may even be tossed on the horns of a furious dilemma, but who cares? Let us go from this horrible hill. Let us roll, let us bowl, let us plunge. Let's go rolling and bowling and spinning until we're away from old Spiker and Sponge. One second later, slowly, insidiously, almost gently, the great peach started to lean forward and steal into the motion. The whole room began to tilt over 
and all the furniture went sliding across the floor and crashed against the far wall. So did James and the ladybug and the old green grasshopper and Miss Spider and the earthworm and also the centipede who had just come slithering quickly down the wall. Outside in the garden at that very moment, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker had just taken their places at the front gate, each of them with a bunch of tickets in her hand, and the first stream of early morning sightseers was visible in the distance, climbing up the hill to view the peach. We shall make a fortune today, Aunt Spiker was saying. Just look at all those people. Wonder what became of that horrid little boy of ours last night, Aunt Sponge said. He never did come back, did he? Probably fell down in the dark and broke his leg, Aunt Spiker said. Or his neck, maybe, Aunt Sponge, or Aunt, Spun Aunt Sponge said hopefully. Just wait till I get my hands on him, Aunt Spiker said, waving her cane. He'll never want to stay out all night again by the time I'm finished with him. Good gracious me, what's that awful noise? Both women swung around to look. The noise, of course, had been caused by the giant peach crashing through the fence that surrounded it. And now gathering speed every second, it came rolling across the garden toward the place where Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker were standing. They gaped, they screamed, they started to run, they panicked. They both got in each other's way. They began pushing and jostling and each of them was thinking only about saving herself Aunt Sponge, the fat one, tripped over a box that she had bought along the way to keep money in and fell flat on her face. Aunt Spiker immediately tripped over Aunt Sponge and came down on top of her. They both lay on the ground, fighting and clawing and yelling and struggling frantically to get up. But before they could do this, the mighty peach was upon them. There was a crunch and then there was silence. The peach rolled on. And behind it, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker lay ironed out upon the grass as flat and thin and lifeless as a couple of paper dolls cut out of a picture book. <laughs>